Yeah. What is the situation like in Europe? Well, in Europe, it's not nearly as bad as in the U.S. Um, there are actually laws that are being enacted across the European Union to ban some of these confinement systems that, that, that I showed here. Um, veal crates, gestation crates, and battery cages are being phased out across Europe. Some European countries have outlawed them for years. In Europe, the farms also tend to be smaller. I think that the decision-making process tends to be more inclusive and more sort of community-oriented. In the U.S., oftentimes policies are the result of powerful interest groups in Washington, D.C. And agribusiness, for decades, has invested in the legislative process. And they control the agriculture committees. And unfortunately, legislation like we try to advance, you know, to ban cruel confinement and other cruel factory farming practices, go to the agriculture committees, who are made up of agricultural people, and they generally uh, are very dismissive. So things in Europe are much better. Yeah. There's actually laws that are being enacted to make it illegal to take pictures at these farms, uh, to increase the penalty for trespassing on these farms. It really shows that they have something to hide. So it's just gotten tougher, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hypothetical question, Gene. What do you think would happen if the Commodities Credit Corporation of the United States Department of Agriculture was abolished? Question, what would happen if the Commodities Credit Corporation of the USDA was abolished? Well, my belief is that the meat, dairy, and egg industries depends on public funding to do what it does and depends on taxpayers to kind of clean up its messes. I think that if we had a real, a, a, a functioning market where people were making informed choices that are consistent with their own values and their own interests, and the government was not running the price of meat, milk, and eggs down, and not encouraging people to consume these products, I think we'd have a big shift. I think the price of gasoline going up is going to have an impact. I think if you look at this thing economically, it's completely inefficient. I was at a dairy industry conference and I was arguing that the most efficient way to feed our world, which farmers constantly say they want to do, they want to provide wholesome food for our world, they say the most efficient way to do that is to do it through factory farming. And I challenged them and said, where did you get your information? Everything I've read and all the empirical evidence suggests that eating plants directly is much more efficient. So when I asked them where they get their information saying that eating factory farmed animals is the most efficient, they told me the name of the book and it was called Saving the Planet with Pesticides and Plastics. <laughs> and uh, so I think that farm policy has unfortunately promoted the commodification of animals, the industrialization of farming, and also the health problems that have become epidemic in our country. And I think that, you know, policy, the government needs to promote plant-based agriculture, farmers markets, CSAs, community gardens, and perhaps with this new administration, we're going to start seeing some steps in that direction. Creating a community garden at USDA in Washington is a very positive step, but we have many more to go. Yeah. I'm sorry. What farming practices in Canada? Canada is very similar to the United States. It's not quite as big in terms of the industrialization. And I think there's also more transparency in Canada. For example, in the U.S., we have about 100 million cattle. Canada has about one-tenth that many. The beef industry in the U.S. and Canada are practically the same in terms of practices. But in the U.S., we've only found three cows with mad cow disease. In Canada, they found about 10. And I think it's because they're looking more. In the U.S., I think our policies have been don't look, don't find. And we have not looked very hard, and we have not found much. In fact, there's a slaughterhouse in Kansas that wanted to test all of their cows for mad cow disease. And the reason for that is they wanted to export to Korea. And the Koreans said they would ex accept them if they were all tested. So the slaughterhouse wanted to test them. The USDA took them to court and said, you cannot test them all. So what do they have to hide? I think that mad cow disease is much more prevalent in this country than the USDA wants us to know. And I think that, you know, they've, they've taken some steps that are highly questionable. And hopefully that'll start changing. Uh, but I think in Canada there's more transparency than in this country. So, okay, well, thank you all very much. I'll be back there with the books.
Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, refreshments are out in the back. And if you have the energy to help stack our chairs 10 high, please join in. And come back next month. Aloha, everybody. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344, or visit our website at www.vsh.org, vsh.org.